During your career, did you ever get discouraged playing baseball? And how did you overcome that? Well, I mean, when you do anything for a long period of time, there's there's going to be down times. But uh, for me, it was it was always about believing in myself. And I think as long as you believe in yourself, people ask me as a veteran player, you know, what do you do for young players? Well, my job as a veteran player um, is to make sure that that you, as my teammate, as my younger teammate, don't lose belief in yourself. Because if you lose belief in yourself, then you're no good to yourself and you're no good to the team, you know? So it's all about believing in oneself and, and knowing that uh, there are going to be down periods. You just have to um, have perseverance and, and, and keep believing that um, you have the ability to, to do good things. What would you tell young people that loves a sport or a hobby and interested in pursuing it as a career? Well, the first thing that I would tell them is get a good education, you know, because um, that was one of the things that was always preached to me. If you get a good education, that's something that can't be taken away. And sport, no matter what it is, is not going to last forever. So uh, getting a good education along with being able to do uh, what it is you love to do, I, I had that opportunity. My mom always stressed the importance of getting a good education. I always promised her that I would do that uh, while at the same time trying to get the, the opportunity to live my dream. And my dream was to play professional baseball, which didn't happen for me right out of high school. I never got drafted out of high school. So I went to a, um, a small school in Central California called Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo where I went on a partial academic scholarship and I was a walk-on into the baseball program. So I'm living proof that uh, guys that play professional sports aren't always bonus babies. i tell you a quick story here. Now, my uh, uh, junior year, I, I went to play semi-pro baseball in a little small town called Clarinda, Iowa. It's where um, after your baseball season in school, they, they send you to a place where you can work during the day and then you play baseball in the evening. Well, I went to this little town called Clarinda, Iowa, which is in southwest Iowa, and I used a jackhammer during the day and, um, and played baseball at night. So, you know, when I'm standing at home playing there, you know, my hands were shaking. But uh, uh, I believe that, that having that opportunity was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me because it taught me responsibility and all those things. Uh, while playing there, I got drafted by the Detroit Tigers in, uh, in 1976, which was my junior year, and they offered me $8,500, and I felt that if they didn't give me at least 10 grand, they weren't going to take a real good look at me. So I went back and asked them for 10 grand, which they promptly told me no, they couldn't do, it wasn't in the budget. So I went back to school in hopes of getting drafted again my senior year, which I did by the San Diego Padres. Now, not many seniors get drafted, but I knew that my name was on the board at that time, so I wanted to get as close to my degree as I possibly could in hopes of getting drafted again my senior year, which I did by the San Diego Padres. Uh, they drafted me, and being the good businessman that I am, I signed for $5,000 and a bus ticket to Walla Walla, Washington. Since the 80s, you've been visible and beyond to the St. Louis area. What have you done to help out the community? Well, I've tried to uh, lend my, uh, my name to causes. Um, I've always deemed it very, very important to become a part of the community. It was one of the reasons that when I got traded here in the winter of 1980, uh, 1981, uh, 82 being my first season here, um, I felt it important to become a part of this community. Um, so I, I moved my family here, and um, so we use our celebrity sometimes to bring awareness to important causes. And I've tried to do that as I've gone through, and. Uh, help raise as much money for the less fortunate as we possibly can. And um, to this point, I'm, I'm proud to say that I, I think that I've, uh, I've lent my name to a lot of great causes here in the St. Louis area and continue to do that uh, because this has been a community that has, um, has given me and my family a, a, a lot of great moments and, and stuff. So it's just a small way that, that we, can, we can give back. And the last question, can you still hit no hand backflips? <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally, no. <laughs> I gave that up in uh, 96. It took me 52 years to realize that that was, that was kind of dangerous. So, <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. Oh, okay. Well, uh, thank you for your time, and it's been, been a pleasure. Oh, thank you, Robert.